Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals but without all the voodoo. I want to revisit a topic uh, that comes up often and a very specific question about this topic. Let's talk about room ratios again, but in particular the golden ratio because obviously that comes up a lot, still does. Is the golden ratio really that good when it comes to room ratios when picking dimensions for your room? I thought I'd test this theory a little bit by kind of the mo more modern standards and see what that gives us. Let's dig in. So what I've got here are a few of the sort of typical room ratio recommendations on the left, which I got mainly from the Master Handbook of Acoustics. And on top is the, the golden ratio as well. I've added an example for each right? Because the way this works is that we always start with kind of the room height as the beginning of our calculation. We, we consider that as sort of the unit height, one, and then we multiply that, that number, that actual number, by a certain factor to get the ratios, right? So in the terms of the golden ratio, for example, we start with a room, room height of one, and then a width of 1.6 times that height, and then 2.56 times the height to get the length of the room, right? So I got an example here of what that might look like for a typical small room, a typical home studio with kind of a, a about an eight foot ceiling. I'm doing this in metric because it's just much easier to kind of add the numbers into the calculator uh, in metric than in imperial. Um, so just bear with me, but like basically this is eight feet and the same concepts apply. I just don't want to work with fractions. Why? Why? Why these stupid fractions with feet? Anyway, so we got the golden ratio. And then we've got a bunch of other ones here. We've got Sepmeyer, Loudon, and then Falkman and Boner. Boner. Yes, I watch a lot of Family Guy. Um, so, um, and I kind of picked out, I calculated a few examples that I just want to show you. There are a bunch of others, but I just want to give you an overview of how the golden ratio compares to some of these others by the most modern standards or the most kind of uh, recent standards that we've got, the recent models that we've got, okay? Uh, quick disclaimer, obviously for all of you guys out there who are now thinking, oh God, I have to optimize, perfectly optimize my room down to the fraction of an inch. No, you don't. Obviously this only works in square rooms, right? The more your room deviates from a perfect square, the less this will work. Okay, so even slight angles will change the actual frequencies at which you will actually find room modes. Um, the way the room is constructed will change the frequency and the, the intensity, the amplitude at, to which degree room modes actually build up, right? So all of this is very, very theoretical. Just keep that in mind and that it only really applies to square rooms. When you don't have a square room, None of this really matters, <laughs> okay? So just keep that in mind. So on the right, we've got our AMROC room mode calculator, which you've seen me use quite a few times already. And I'll link it in, in the description as well. It basically takes these actual numbers, so that the actual dimensions, you put them in here and it calculates at which frequencies you end up with the main types of modes. All right, it does a few things on top of that. Obviously it shows us where these modes sit at which frequency, okay? And it also gives us a kind of a visual description of what that room mode looks like in that square room. There's also a, a cross that it plots in terms of the bolt area, which maybe you've seen me talk ab about in my kind of very practical tutorial on how to actually use this calculator to size the dimensions of your particular room. I'll link it in the card. And then it gives us this Bonello graph, which I'll talk about more because it's kind of the most recent, I guess the most accurate uh, way to kind of predict um, how good ratios are. Part of this, uh, so the other th part that you really need to understand is that optimizing room dimensions, no matter what, what ratio you go for, what kind of metric you go by, it doesn't stop you from having big peaks and dips in the low end in an untreated room, right? This just says where the room modes sit, yeah? And if they overlap, for example, but it doesn't tell us, uh, or it doesn't it doesn't keep these room modes from happening, 
Okay, so this is not a, a, a optimizing room dimensions is not a way to get rid of room modes. Optimizing room dimensions is a way to ideally spread them out evenly, evenly make them not sit on top of each other or have huge holes and you get that even spread. And basically the way to think about it is that it gives you a foundation for good, potentially good low end when you go through the treatment process. All right, that's that's all it is, yeah? Optimizing room dimensions is building the, a good foundation for a an even low end, okay? Uh, so now let's let's dig in and look at some of these ratios. Obviously the question is, if we if we try and answer how good a certain ratio is, what metric do we use? Good by whose standards, right? And so that's not an easy question to answer. Yeah. So I think the most the most kind of relevant one or the one that kind of makes the most sense to me is really the the Bonello one. Uh, basically, Bonello said, if you divide the spectrum up into third octave chunks you want the number of room modes in each chunk to gradually go up as you increase, as you go up in frequency. Ideally, you want to go to go up. If it stays the same, that's okay too, right? So that's kind of all we're looking for. We're looking for this number here to gradually increase or at least stay the same, all right? And so with these numbers that I calculated here for this golden ratio room, so 250 centimeters by 400 by 640, Turns out there's a big hole <laughs> right there. Yeah, so uh, that already not so great. Yeah, uh, if we look at kind of the older way to analyze this, which is a much simpler and just as good to be honest way to do this, um, the bolt, the bolt area, the cross doesn't even end up in the bolt area. Yeah, so this blob basically is a as a as a region in 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 the different plots of uh, or in the different combinations of dimensions if you if you kind of plot this if it if that if you plot that that cross and it ends up inside this bolt area you basically have a a basis for good dimensions yeah and so even in this case that doesn't end up where it's what's supposed to be yeah so um the golden ratio not so great at least with these numbers that i picked okay um that might change a little bit does it change I mean, it scales. It scales obviously in frequency. It scales in pure dimension, uh, sort of numbers, as in when we're talking about actual lengths. When we're talking about how that maps to notes in the in, in music, that's a different question. But um, yeah, let's not dive into that hole any further. Um, basically, right now it's not looking good for the golden ratio. So let's go over to Sepmeyer, all right? So there's a bunch here that uh, that um, Everest lists in his book. I think there are more, but uh, I basically only calculated this first one because I wanted to look at these other ones as well. So here is the next one, 250 by 285 by 347.5. Bolt, eh, just on the edge. Bonello, not looking too bad, yeah? One other way to kind of judge how good this actually is, is once once the Vonello is looking good, we can look at a pileups. So whether there are room modes sitting on top of each other, right? And and uh, down here, this doesn't look too bad, but uh, up here, there's a there's a kind of a pileup happening here. There's a pileup happening here. All that might uh, might mean that that area might be a little a little tricky in the frequency range. Uh, obviously, this is kind of easily like way above 100 hertz so it shouldn't be too difficult to treat this with the treatment or to get control of this with treatment but that's just something to be aware of okay all right so Sepmeyer in its first version not too bad let's move on Loudon in this first one so 250 by 350 by 475 looking at Bonello again that looks pretty good jumping over to the bolt area right smack in the middle not bad and in terms of uh, pileups, maybe one here, just under 100 hertz, a bunch of stuff happening up here, over here, but this is way above 100 hertz, should be relatively easily treated. So Loudon, looking pretty good so far, at least this particular ratio. Okay, here's another one, Falkman. Let's look at this dude, 250 times 375 times 625. 
Ooh, that's not looking good. Bolt just on the edge, but Bonello not so much. Yeah, we've got two two steps uh, where the the number actually increases. Yeah, so this is not particularly good. Yeah, um, at least by Bonello standards, right? And then we've got some pileups here again, pileups here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, maybe you wouldn't want to pick that one. Okay, let's go for Boner. Boner. All right, so here's Boner. Bolt, looking good. Bonello, looking pretty good. In terms of pileups, yeah, this doesn't this doesn't look too great over here either. Yeah, some pileups here as well. Yeah, so this one, although good by these two metrics, Bolt and Bonello, if you, we actually look at where the room modes end up, um, maybe it's not the great the the kind of the the greatest ratio, the best uh, option. Okay, so as a quick overview, I think that's uh, pretty clear. Yeah, the golden ratio at least by modern standards for room ratios in this particular example, not so great. Your mileage might vary if you mess around with these numbers, um, but uh, I probably wouldn't pick that as my first choice. I'd probably go with, uh, with one of these other ones and just check whether with what I've got available, uh, they work out and then, and then maybe go with those, right? But Again, a reminder, don't obsess about this. It's not worth it. Yeah, this is very, very theoretical. In practice, your room's actual room mode pattern will deviate from this calculation quite a bit. Even just windows, doors, if you, one wall is made from drywall, if your floor, your ceiling is particularly flimsy, all this stuff has a, an impact on the actual pattern and the, the spread or the, the location of these actual room modes. And then these calculations become kind of pointless yeah so don't obsess about this it's it's fun enough to check what's going on but then just kind of pick something and then just move on or just as a reminder if you are currently in the process of treating your room or you want to treat your room and you need kind of a an overview of what it is you're actually doing figure out in what order to walk through the different steps of treating your room i want you to download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description it's my five steps to treating a home studio. It's the same process that I go through when I treat a home studio. Uh, it's the same process that I think you should go through in order to not turn in circles while you're moving through this fairly complex topic, right? So make sure you follow the steps in the home studio treatment framework so that you can uh, be sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time. Obviously, this is part of that as well. It's the first step in the process, analyzing the room, and there's a bit of context in there as well on how to think about this. Um, but again, if you are in the process of treating your home studio, make sure you download that at the link in the description. Okay, that was a quick one, a video about the golden ratio, some more context into this whole topic of picking room dimensions, picking ratios. I hope you got something out of it. As always, let's get back to trusting our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.